everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be doing a Critters tutorial, taking you through all the tips, tools, and shortcuts you should know about to make your experience a lot more comfortable. Krita is one of the best free digital drawing programs, and it is said to be a great alternative to Photoshop as well. It is perfect for beginners, completely free, and contains all the essentials you would expect in a drawing program. In their website, you can find a ton of learning resources and tutorials, so if you want to learn more about them, be sure to check them out. To download Krita, search up krita.org in your browser, or click on the link in the description. Go to Get Krita Now, and then select your computer, and double click on Download. It might take a while to load, but it will soon get installed. When it appears in your home screen, double click on it and wait for it to load until it opens. You will have the option to create a new document. I like to have my size around this big and this resolution, but it depends a lot on your computer and what you are going to create. So I recommend you just play around with this until you're comfortable with a certain size. In the content, you can edit what will be in your document. You could also create it from a clipboard, make a comic, animation, etc. Once you're happy, click create. The document will open up and you might feel a bit overwhelmed because there are so many brushes and tools and it's just super confusing, but don't worry because once you know how Krita works, using it will be really quick and easy. If Krita is being particularly slow or laggy, try following these tips and it will probably work fine again. When I first opened up Krita, what I did was just start to draw. I had no idea what I was doing or how anything worked, and I expected to see some sort of digital masterpiece. When I was done, which didn't happen, <laughs> instead I think it's really important you get to know the app first. And my favorite way of doing this is by trying out the brushes. So just go through all of your brushes and try them out with different colors, different effects. Just have fun and enjoy. By the end, you will have hopefully learned a few brushes that you particularly like or feel interested in. When I draw, it's uncomfortable to have to find those ones I like, so instead I made a new tag and clicked plus. Then I selected a brush and assigned it to, to that tag so that I have easy access to all of them. The brushes I have in my tag are these in case you would like to try them out. I use two erasers, the smooth edged one and this softer one. If I zoom in, you can see the difference between the texture. For my sketches, I like to use this pencil. It has an opacity brush pressure, which means that the harder I press on my tablet, the bigger the opacity is going to be and vice versa. For my line art, I use this texture pencil that also has brush pressure. When I lay down flat colors, I use this basic brush. The brush pressure affects the size of the brush instead of the opacity, so the harder I press, the bigger the size. To add shading, I use this airbrush. And to blend colors, I use this basic blender. Now I'm going to talk you through most of the shortcuts and tools in Krita. I won't be showing you every single one of them because that would take forever, but I will introduce you to the essential ones. After that, it's just a matter of playing around and investigating other tools and settings. Feel free to pause this whenever you need to try the tools and shortcuts yourself. So in Krita, there are sort of like three main parts for tools and editings and first I'm going to look at the tools on the right. If you find that you're missing something on your screen that you would like to have, you can go to settings then dockers and click on whatever docker you want to be shown on your screen. And remember that you can move these dockers around your canvas so you can basically personalize your workspace. 
each point of this triangle is black, then the color itself, and then white. You rotate the circle to choose another color group. The first bar changes the hue of the color, the second the saturation, and the last one the value of the color, so how dark or light it is. There's also a tool options docker. It seems pretty useless, but actually it can change all of your tools and edit them as well. For example, with the transform tool, you can choose different types of this tool and change the settings to your needs. Now onto layers. Whatever you draw on one layer doesn't affect the rest of the layers. Click plus to make a new layer or mask depending on what you want, then click on the squares to duplicate the layer. You can put a layer on top or under another one with these arrows. The settings for the layers are here, change the name of your layer, color code it, change the opacity, how transparent or obscure it is, the blending mode, and play around with these settings. You can delete it on the bin icon. And you can also make a clipping mask, which will allow you to draw only on top of the layer's content, and an alpha lock, which is similar. This lock icon will not let you make any changes to your layer, and the eye will determine whether your layer is visible or not. Onto the bar up here. Click these icons to make a new document, open an existing one, and save your current document. The undo button can also be done with Ctrl plus Z and redo, which is Ctrl plus Shift plus Z. Here you have gradients that you can edit like this and put in your canvas with the gradient tool or by clicking G on your keyboard. There are some patterns and you have another color selection docker. Click this icon to access settings to edit all of your brushes. And this is the brush toolbar once again. You can edit the blending mode here, and the eraser will make any normal brush work as an eraser but with the same texture. You can lock your whole canvas and get any brush that you are using back to its default settings. This bar controls the opacity of the brush and this one edits the size which can also be done by clicking shift and dragging. Finally, the mirror tool. Use it both horizontally and vertically. You move these lines around and whatever you draw will be duplicated on the opposite side. At the very top, you have even more tabs. You have the file tab, which contains all the stuff about document and file, and edit, undo, redo, copy, etc. Then you also have the shortcuts. You will determine how much of the toolbar or canvas is shown to you. Image is all about the size and movement of the canvas. Click M to mirror it, which will help you find mistakes and round proportions. Layer has the same edits as image, but only in one layer. Then select edits your selection. Filter applies a filter. With tools you can edit and add shortcuts to your dockers. And settings will edit that as well with the docker tool as I've mentioned before. Finally, open and close new windows with this tab and use the help tab if you need. And finally, the main toolbar at the left. The first four tools only work on vector layers. The calligraphy tool, freehand path tool, and curve tool are the only brushes that work on these kind of layers. You can draw something and move it around like this, then edit the shape with these knots. And you can also add some text or title. These tools do work on paint layers with normal brushes. The main brush tool that you can have by clicking B on your keyboard, and these that make different shapes and lines. As I said, these are the vector brush tools, and this tool works exactly like a brush, but it is a bit more dynamic and smooths out your lines. This tool is great to make mandalas and backgrounds because it mirrors whatever you draw four times. In this next section, you will transform or rotate whatever is on that layer. Remember that there are different types of these tools that you can access in the tool options dock. This icon will move it around and you can access it by clicking T. Crop something by clicking C and then click enter. If you only want to edit one part of your layer, select it and use these tools on it as well. The gradient tool, which you can edit at the top here, can also be accessed by clicking G on your keyboard. Click Ctrl to use the color selection tool. The colorize mask editing tool.
Click on the canvas with the tool and the mask will appear blurring your line art. Then scribble on some color where you want it. Click on the icon at the very right. And the colors will be filled. It will take a while, but then click on the pencil icon, the easiest and quickest way to color. The freehand tool is also amazing. Let's say you have to erase a piece of liner, but it's in the same layer as your background. Select it with a tool which will fill it in which what it guesses is behind, which is especially useful for photo editing. The bucket fill tool can be accessed by clicking F on your keyboard, and all you need to remember is to change it from current layer to all layers unless you like to color in the same layer as your liner, which I find really uncomfortable. The assistant tool measures stuff and is mostly per for perspective drawing. You can edit the type of assistance in tool options as well. Then there is the pretty similar measure tool which I still don't know how you're supposed to use it. This pin icon is for references. Once again, go to tool options, click on the clipboard icon that will paste the reference from your clipboard into Krita. Then you can change the opacity and saturation and move it around wherever you like. Then you have the selection tool in different shapes and sizes. Basically, you can only draw inside of the selection if there is one, and you can also transform it and move it around. Apart from the selection shapes, there's also the magic wand selector, selector the color selector, the curve selector, and the magnetic selector. If you can't select it all in one go, simply press Shift or A to get more than one selection. And if you want to remove something from that selection, click S or Alt. Use this icon to zoom into your canvas, which you can also do by clicking plus and minus on your keyboard. To rotate your canvas, click 6 and to the left click 4. To make your canvas 0% rotating, click 5. 2 will fit your canvas to the page, 1 will automatically zoom in 100%. The hand icon will let you grab the canvas and move it around. I'm sorry if this went too, too quickly. Um, I don't like long videos and I feel like long tutorials are really boring and I don't want to make this boring. But yeah, if you have any questions, please tell me in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to include an example of like an actual speed paint in Krita, but I will post that Friday next week, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And if you're coming from the future, then the link should be in the description. I hope this video was in some way helpful and that you now feel a lot more confident using Krita. Thank you so much for watching and if you're interested in art related videos, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Bye!